Live from Bill Hanlon Stadium at St. Mary's High School, WTAP Sports brings you the 28th Battle Against Cystic Fibrosis Football Classic, sponsored by Community Bank. Important football games in the Mid Ohio Valley each year. It's the annual Battle Against Cystic Fibrosis All Star Game, and we're taking you all the way to kickoff, which is scheduled for 7 10. I'm Phyllis Smith. And I'm Alexa Griffey. We are here at St. Mary's High School, where tonight players will showcase their skills on the gridiron to raise money for cystic fibrosis research. Cystic fibrosis is a lung disease that affects close to 40,000 Americans and currently has no cure. The goal of the annual football game is to help raise money for research while also showcasing talent from around the region. Tickets for the game are just $5 and there is still time to get here and watch all the action. Over the next 30 minutes, we will learn more about the condition battle against cystic fibrosis organization and what they're doing to find a cure for it. We will also talk to the people impacted by the condition and take a look at the coaches and players out here taking part in this important game. First, According we start with a look CDC, at why we are cystic here. Cystic fibrosis, fibrosis is a genetic and disorder in which someone's mucus is too thick and sticky. This impacts the lungs and other organs as well. Probably the easiest thing that most people will relate to is just the shortness of breath. I mean, if you think about trying to breathe through a straw, if I made you do that, you wouldn't be able to sustain that. And that's what these people are living with. Respiratory therapist Susan Oftenkamp says most cystic fibrosis patients will end up getting a lung transplant. Plant. It impacts their daily life. Um, they're eating because it affects the digestive system. It affects how they um, get the nutrients from the food that we eat. It affects their lungs. It's a disorder people are born with that's typically diagnosed in childhood. So this machine right here is what medical professionals use to measure how severe a cystic fibrosis case is. So how it works is you take this machine right here, you breathe into it, and then if you want to get a more specific reading, all you do is shut the store. Optincamp says with advancements and treatments through the years, going to the hospital has become a less frequent trip for patients. They're living into adulthood now, which we didn't see um, when I started in the 80s. So um, that just shows how much we've advanced. Advancements that medical professionals hope to build on. Laura Bowen, WTAP News. According to the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation, there are close to 40,000 people with CF in the U.S. And if you look outside the country, that number is over 100,000 people. Back here in the Mid-Ohio Valley, one organization is working to help people with a debilitating disease and their families for 30 years. Earlier this week, our Chase Campbell met with football director of the program, Jody Mo, to learn more about what it is doing. The Battle Against Cystic Fibrosis Foundation started in 1993 with Chris and Jackie Hunt, a couple whose daughter has cystic fibrosis. Cystic fibrosis, or CF, is a progressive genetic disease that affects the lungs, pancreas, and other organs. The Hunts organized the first football game to raise awareness for cystic fibrosis. Since that first game, the game has become a nearly annual event and a staple of the community. When you look at it from a year and how long it's been, that's an, that's an, that's amazing an accomplishment, you know. The board to manage the foundation was incorporated soon after the first game. The foundation works to support people with cystic fibrosis and their families. They also raise funds to support research into the condition to find a cure. BACF committee president Julia Maloney says that so far the foundation has raised over six hundred thousand dollars. So we just tried to uh, try to make the best we can uh, for uh, those who are battling cystic fibrosis or those who um, um, you know have, have been involved with someone with cystic fibrosis and who unfortunately have passed away. Jody Mo, the football coach for St. Mary's High School, is the director of the BACS football game. Once I took over, um, I wanted to make sure everything was played at St. Mary's just because I had access to everything. Mo said the involvement of Pleasance County has added a lot to what the BACF is able to do outside of the game. We have a pool party on Thursday night where we uh, we have a cystic fibrosis presentation where uh, W Medicine comes and they present uh, a um, uh, lesson. Uh, on cystic fibrosis. Mode emphasized the awareness raising value of the foundation's work for the community and for the people involved in the work itself. 
there's going to be somebody affected with cystic fibrosis. Uh, it may be maybe a child that they would have. Uh, you know, so they, these are things that uh, that you don't lose sight of and you don't forget. Moat said that the work of the foundation and the way it unites people in support of a good cause represent the best parts of humanity. I think just the um, the generosity of mankind, uh, you know, wanting to help um, each other out, helping people out, uh, that's, that makes it uh, special, you know, because, uh, you know, you're doing it for the love of being able to help someone and not for a financial gain. In St. Mary's, Chase Campbell, WTAP News. Stand by. Jody Moat is also the head football coach at St. Mary's High School. He also coached in the BACF football game back in 2006. Cystic fibrosis has a debilitating impact on the people living with the condition and their families. Our Next on this BACF pregame show, we talked with two mothers who have felt that impact. Welcome back. The battle against cystic fibrosis football game and the BAC basketball game that was held in the spring helps raise money to help find a cure for the disease. A young man from the Mid-Ohio Valley, Travis Flores, has it. We have interviewed him throughout the years about his journey with the disease. I talked to his mom for people who may not know his story. Travis Flores grew up in Newport, Ohio, and he was diagnosed with cystic fibrosis when he was a baby. Travis lost his voice and was not able to do an interview, but his mom, Teresa, came to the station to talk to us about him. He's smart. He's intelligent. He's magnetic. He's just incredible with everything that he strives to do. He's a fighter. Travis is now 32 and lives in Los Angeles. He's had three double lung transplants, which is highly unusual. He has always beaten the odds. I mean, who, who gets a third transplant? Travis is now facing a new health problem. The kidneys are not doing so well from all the medications and stuff that he's been on all of his life. So now he needs a kidney transplant and he's doing dialysis and waiting his time to get the kidney, but his lungs are strong and doing great. Teresa says they will know more this summer. And they've set the appointment now for July for his initial consultation for transplant. And we hope from that point on to get tested and any other donors that want to come forward that want to donate um, and get tested, we'd really appreciate it. Since Travis wasn't able to speak, long. he gave his mom a statement to read. My fight has been long and continues still. I am so thankful for the endless support that has come from my Mid-Ohio Valley family, friends, and community. I am just one of countless individuals with cystic fibrosis that has felt the love and care that the BACF games have shown to us throughout the years. Please continue to support and encourage everybody to support the BACF games. We will continue to update you as Travis tries to get a kidney transplant. And as we saw there, CF just doesn't impact the person with the condition. It also impacts the people around them. Our Mitchell Blayhead sits down with a woman who lost her mother to cystic fibrosis and what the BACF game means to her. I don't know necessarily if the young boys really know what it's about. They just want to play football, but it really means a lot to people who are affected by someone in their family that has cystic fibrosis. Tessie Carr's mother, Dorothy Scadden, passed away on May 22, 1984, from cystic fibrosis. Tessie was only 11 years old. Carr says most of her memories are of her mother battling the disease. I mean, I do have fond memories of her, but a lot of my memories are of her being sick. So, um, you know, that kind of <laughs> overshadows the good, the good things. She had a beautiful singing voice. <laughs> So, so when we were kids, um, my sister and I used to sing with her in church, and that was very special. 
Tessie says she is very thankful for what the battle against cystic fibrosis game does in spreading awareness of this disease. So I think just bringing awareness to the disease um, and updating people on you know the, the new treatments that they have is very very good and remarkable. Tessie even got the chance to see her son and his friends play in the game. She still has her son's jersey from the game. Yeah, my son Noah Schultz, he played in the game when he was a senior. That's been several years ago. Um, and it, I can't even tell you what it meant to me. <laughs> I don't think he comprehended, you know, because he was wanting to play football. So um, it touched me in my heart really like nothing else um, and his buddies got to play with them and you know it was very special and at that time I would talk to the team as well and you know kind of give them a little bit of knowledge about what it was about and thanking them with you know my whole heart. Tessie says she hopes to see her youngest son playing the BACF game soon. In St. Mary's this is Mitchell Blayhut, WTAP News, this is home. Coming up next, as we count down to kick off, we hear from players on both sides of the river about why this game is important to them. Okay. Players from both teams are out on the field right now as we speak here at St. Mary's High School. But how did we get here to this point and why is this game played? Our Jacob Coran sat down and met up with Jody Moat to find out. The 28th annual Battle Against Cystic Fibrosis football game raises money for research while also showcasing talent from around the region. Jody Moat, director of the BACF football game, credits those who volunteer alongside him for making the football and basketball games a reality. The, this committee is just unbelievable. Uh, Julia Maloney is our president and uh, the people that's, that makes up this committee uh, are very solid and uh, I think that's the reason why this happens to be honest with you. Moat says there are donations from the food in the concession stand to the jerseys on the players backs. Uh, the pieces of the puzzle you know what I mean people who are who are part of it and I hear something I'm forgetting I know, know, know there is uh, but uh, obviously it's not intentional but there's just uh, there's so many people that, that uh, play a part in this in this event. The amount of money raised has yet to be determined, but Moat is thrilled from what he has seen from each team. The number was outstanding uh, for what these young men, both West Virginia and Ohio, have done um, in raising the money uh, for this event. And there's been people that that have done the minimum, and then there's been people who have just been above and beyond. The game is an opportunity for many of the players to play competitively for the last time, but the bigger focus is raising money for cystic fibrosis. If it affects one one student, uh, athlete, um, then it's worth it to me. The football game is one of several fundraising events put on by the BACF. Jacob Krantz, WTAP, this is home. This is the 28th BACF football game, and while the game has been exciting, it's not possible without the players. Akron Alston visited practice this week to find out why they play and how it's impacting them. Thank you. I spoke to some players from West Virginia and Ohio about the battle against cystic fibrosis football game, what the game meant to them, what awareness they're hoping to bring to cystic fibrosis, and what it means to them to pad up one last time for such a good cause. The battle against cystic fibrosis football game is taking place in 28 of the last 30 years. This year's group of senior athletes from Ohio and West Virginia admittedly coming in didn't know much about cystic fibrosis, but when they were selected, they took the time to learn. I learned yesterday, kind of affecting anybody at any age, they had a boy here from East Fairmont and he's just a grade under me and he has to take treatments for it twice a day and it affects his life pretty well. After I learned that I was able to come up here and play. I kind of looked into it a little bit, so I tried to learn a little bit. The BACF football game has brought players who usually rival each other together for a good cause, and the players understand the magnitude. For me, I want to say it's a, it's a great deal to be able to play for them, uh, especially raising the money to help go towards fundings and hopefully finding more research and cures. Happy that uh, we're able to play a game for this uh, good cause and raise money to try and find a cure for it 
and uh, I'm just happy to be on the football field again and, f and it's for something uh, fighting for us not just playing a game it's actually coming up with money and raising a cure for it or trying to find one. This game has brought awareness about cystic fibrosis to the players and they're hoping the game brings the same awareness to everyone watching or attending. Hopefully a lot of people show up. Uh, we raise a lot of money for the uh, cause and just goes good from there. I just, I would just like to like help inform the people that come to watch the game just that like football to learn more about cystic fibrosis and what they can do to help solve it. A great cause, the reason for a great football game to come. Just football, it's the best sport and uh, I've missed playing it since the last game and when we lost to Newark Catholic and there's nothing like it. I had track, it's nowhere close to the same as football. I just love playing football. These players are so, so excited to not only be just playing in a regular football game, but a football game for such a great cause. That's all I have for you. Back to you, and enjoy the game. Thank you, Karan. Coming up, we hear from the head coaches who are doing more than just teaching the participants game plays. That's next on the BACF pregame. Getting the players ready to play is a big part of the week and teaching them why it is important is too. WTAP Sports' Evan Lasik visited the Ohio practice and spoke with Coach Mike Flannery from River High School. All right, now Coach Burnside, can you tell me what it means for you to coach in a game such as this? Um, you know, this is my second time. I got to coach this game in 2013, and um, I learned a lot. I mean, it really increased my awareness about cystic fibrosis. So uh, getting that opportunity, getting this opportunity again in 2023, I mean, it's an honor. I mean, it's more than an all-star game. All of the proceeds go towards cystic fibrosis research. And you know, obviously that means a lot to those individuals and their families. Being able to honor these individuals by coaching the sport yeah. that you love as much as you do, how awesome is that for you to just be doing your job and being able to help these people? I mean, you said it. I mean, you, so that our players get to go out there and, and play another game. Some of them, it'll be the last summer going on to play college. Um, they get to play in a game, but they also get to be a part of an event that uh, actually makes a difference. So it feels really good. Now, last year, Team Ohio, they got the win, 27-6. to six. You're coming in. You're hungry. Dodrich had a very great year. What are you bringing to this game? I mean, you know, you got a week. So we're, we're going to just be hard-nosed. We're going to play hard. Um, everyone on the field is going to fly around and give great effort. Now, how awesome is it to have all of these guys in the locker room? These are some of the best of the state, especially from our area. Yeah. How awesome is it to have them all in one locker room coaching them? It, it's, real, it's a lot of fun, you know. It is a lot of fun. We, you know, we had our, our first practice. Guys were, they were picking up quick and, uh, you know, like you said, they're 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 pretty good players, and, and that shows. What is your message to players about playing an all-star game for a good cause? What have you kind of been telling them? I want to I want to tell players in the future, you know, even the top level players, to whoever gets the opportunity to try to get involved in it, especially the battle against cystic fibrosis. It's just such a great cause, and um, it'll be a good time. They won't regret it. My last question for you is. Ten years ago, you coached in your first one. Yeah. It's changed a lot since then. So going a decade now since the first game you coached for the BACF, how do you think it has helped the area? Um, I, I mean, honestly, I don't even know the numbers, but the amount of uh, funding that they've brought in for research for cystic fibrosis, I'm so I'm sure that it's just uh, it's made a huge impact, and uh, I know that the the families and of those individuals that suffer from that disease, it means a lot to them. On the West Virginia side, coaches and players are looking for their first win since 2018. Evan Lasik visited a practice with Bobby Burnside from Doddridge County. Can you tell me what it's like for you to be able to coach in such a game, in a game such as this? Well, I'm honored to have this third opportunity. You know, years ago when I was at Peyton City, got to coach the West Virginia side, and about five or six years ago, we coached this game from the high side. So it's only nothing but greatness when you're playing for a, for a cause like the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation and the people behind the scene go unnoticed. You know, the guys back like Randy Shepard and Julie in the front office and Jody Moat, 
those people go unrecognized and they do such a tremendous job doing this game. Now coaching from both sides of the field, how awesome is it to have these opportunities for the community and for you? Well, we got four of our own kids in it and uh, what's important that coaches nominate their players and we accept all the nominations. So we've got about 24 kids going into Friday night and they're all going to play. You know, they wouldn't be in an all-star game. You don't want a kid going home a little bit disgruntled because they're all going to play. So that's what our job is. Now for the Mid-Ohio Valley, this is what you said your third time coaching. How have you seen this community come together and grow as this game has? Well, you're, you're playing schools that uh, you're rivalries with during the year, and so it's it's a lot of fun of getting those kids and talking about, hey, what is what did your coach think of us, and here's what we try to do. So they're kind of seeing what we do offensively and defensively here at River, but it's fun coaching those guys that you've played against for four years. Now, a great cause in the battle against cystic fibrosis. What does that mean to you to be head? It's a it's the first thing I told the kids. It's an honor to to be representing what the foundation is and to be raising money for a good cause. And you're teaching these kids something to pass it forward later on in life. And this game, it's bigger than football. Kind of like what you were just saying. It's a message. It's a great thing to do. So going out there, having these kids who may not know what cystic fibrosis is, how awesome is it to get to coach them and? teach them this part. Right, that's that's the job of us, to teach them the part and, and what it's about, what it represents, the BACF, and what, how important this game is in raising money in the basketball game during the winter. Stay with us as we wrap things up and count down to kickoff. Well, well, thank, thank you, you to everyone, everyone for joining us this evening as we counted down to this very important game. game. Stay, Stay with, with us on our Me, My TV network, network as kickoff is just moments away. away. Have a great evening and enjoy all the game action with Jim and Mike.